What is going on guys welcome back to another video I hope you're having an amazing day in today's video we are going to be taking a look at OnePlus 7 Pro auction OS 9.5 running on the Pocophone F1 so again guys I'm extremely sorry for being not that active on my YouTube channel because there's been some stuff going in my real life so again here you go Finally, the auction OS 9.5 on our Pocophone F1. And guys, this is from another developer. These are not the same developers which have been providing us the auction OS for quite some while, to be honest, for some months. Cause those developers have just completely given up, like completely discontinued for the Pocophone F1. Cause earlier, people were just asking to fix bugs, which is like extremely unfair to them cause people are not paying them. This is not the official system that they are running. Like you can actually message MIU developers, they would never reply. But still these developers were working for free and people were just being disgusting to them but then again some people were like that guys it's illegal to port OEM GSS like this cause the oneplus ports for the Pocophone F1 was so close to the original deal that we already have the awesome hardware that is pretty much similar to the oneplus like even the cameras and stuff people were just getting annoyed of it so again developers have just completely given up and these are new developers which are working on it so the thing is it's not that as polished and I probably won't actually recommend as using as a daily driver but if you want to test out the oneplus 7's features and stuff this is definitely a good rom so just again taking a look at this whole thing i'm just not going to waste any further time cause pretty much it's just auction so i'm just going to tell you what are the features enabled or added over here so again going through the left you have your normal shelf again the touch response over here is just amazing in the poco phone f1 if you don't already know it's the thing that i've been complaining in the redmi note 7 pro and the poco phone f1 that the touch screens are not that great so there is no typing issue or scrolling issue in this room which is just amazing when compared to the miui like look at it it's butter smooth again if you scroll down now you have a zen mode card so again if you just enter this thing you can't actually exit your phone like almost one to two hours on what you actually set so again pretty good option for kids but no nah, not at all we need our phones but then again just going back to the home screen now your widget is tucked in over there with the weather widget now the gps over here is hella slow i just can't actually add my weather over here i have actually added manually but my location is just not getting detected at all. It just takes a heck of a lot of time inside the house. Then again, pretty much if you go through the UI, nothing has changed. If you have seen my OnePlus 60 port, the latest one, where I provided the stable and the beta from the previous developers, it's essentially the beta ROM. Like the UI is just completely same. So for example, you now get buttons at the bottom, unlike having the scroll UI as before. So again, you can now just click over here at the bottom, which is same like one UI, easier hand usage, but then again, messages and stuff is just pretty much the same. Again, the performance over here is just mind blowing. As you can see, everything is on tap. Again, you have file dash, everything is present over here, just like before. Again, if you go to the clock, you have world clock, timer, stopwatch. Again, the UI is a bit more adjusted and looks very beautiful easier access but then again if you just go to the quick settings panel as you can see it doesn't really scale down that good cause the previous developers would actually take a heck of a lot of time in fixing the notch and the padding now the padding doesn't actually annoy over here cause we have massive corners but the notch is not that well adjusted so for example it's a bit annoying it like bulges from one to two millimeters so that's an easy fix but developers have to fix it maybe in the future updates but you do get more quick settings panel so for example auto rotate icon has been now updated then again you have zen mode right over here again and screen recorder now the screen recorder over here just works amazing you have internal audio recording then again you can record your full resolution of the poco f1 high quality 60 fps and the bitrate over here even at 16 mbps is just amazing like the quality of this recording is just good and as this is a snapdragon 845 phone you can actually record gameplays without any lag like this is just amazing we will just take a look at the footage pretty quick the recording is just butter smooth there is no lag at all so again going back going through more apps nothing much you get gallery with mid more adjusted editor so you get more features and then let's just hop on to the settings app so again in the settings app nothing much as you saw there the speed is just mind blowing so going directly to the display you have night mode in the night mode you have color temperature which surely works i guess yep the dimming is just completely broken which actually works on the note 5 pro so again now it's just fixed there so if you want to just completely fix that just go to screen calibration just yep easy fix then you have custom color which again works completely so the color gamuts are completely broken of course it will only work on the official rom then again you have screen refresh rate which is of no use because we are stuck to the 60 hertz by hardware yes you can actually oc pocophone f1 to 70 hertz panel but that's not actually good so again keeping on 90 actually solves many of the scrolling issues on the Pocophone F1 but if you now go to the resolution you can actually switch between Full HD Plus and Quad HD Plus. Now in the Quad HD Plus it doesn't actually switch the DPI itself so again everything just looks massive but it does actually work. 
So again, switching back to the full HD, you have video enhancer, which I think barely works in third party apps. Then again, you have ambient display, which is surely broken. Then again, you have wallpapers, themes. In wallpapers, you do get all the live wallpapers from the OnePlus 7 Pro, as you can see. They all look beautiful with beautiful animations. There you go, just looks amazing. But then again, you have font, font size, pretty much all the stuff as before, nothing. If you go to the sounds and vibrations, everything is pretty much working. Even the headphone jack, cause OnePlus 7 Pro has kind of just completely removed the support for it, unlike the 60. So again, the equalizer over here, the Dolby Atmos has been just completely removed, else the speakers will completely fart. Default profile over here is pretty amazing. I actually checked it with my Samsung AKG earphones and it just worked great and loud. So again, if you want to install any kind of third party equalizers, it might actually break the earpiece volume for the calls. So not recommended at all. So again, going down buttons and gestures as before, even the battery storage, going to the security and lock screen, you have fingerprint scanner completely working. But one of the major issues that the fingerprint scanner does actually simulate touches over here. So for example, now if I just touch the fingerprint scanner, it simulates back. Now it simulated just enter for the display. So again, it just touches somewhere between like the bottom part. So for example, if I just search, it will just add space bar over there, as you can see. So again, it needs to be fixed. And then again, the fingerprint scanner can't actually work when the screen is actually off. So again, if you don't already know, OnePlus 7 Pro has an in-display fingerprint scanner, which is always active. So again, if you want to activate this one, you have to actually turn on the phone and then tap the fingerprint scanner, which is just again, blazing fast, like tap, like that's so quick. So again, even on the lock screen, you have a lock button over here, which says you that the phone is locked because if you use face unlock, it will actually unlock and you can actually see your notifications which are hidden. You have phone and camera and you can actually play with this animation or just fool your friends that you have in display scanning, just like that. Fingerprint animation effects, you get three effects over here, which is still good. Like my Galaxy S1 Plus like has nothing, which I surely don't know. Samsung just promotes their customization so much, but doesn't have any animations for the fingerprint. So again, if you go to the smart lock, you have to actually manually add Google smart lock through the Magix module. So I will just tell you guys later on. You have utilities. In the utilities, if you go to the gaming mode now, you have gaming display enhancement, which I highly doubt works at all, but you do get fanatic mode. Now fanatic mode is basically esports mode that you would get in the OnePlus 5D or the 5. Now it just has enhanced process regulator, which I don't have a huge idea on, but surely helps, I guess. Then again, coming back, you have quick launch, which is of no use because we don't have an in-display FP. Then you have OnePlus laboratory, which has DC dimming, again, of no use on the LCD panel. And then you have quick reply and landscape, which is again, pretty handy considering the massive display. Now again, the bugs over here are the battery drain. Now many of the YouTubers didn't even actually like talk about it because everyone was rushing the video cause OnePlus 7 Pro. Who even cares about the subscribers? But yeah, guys, I actually checked it and there is a massive battery drain when idling. So again, if I just go to my screenshots, I just charged my phone completely and just left it out. Now the phone was always warm and here you go, charged it till 100. Just after 11 hours, my phone was completely drained, like literally 8%. I don't know where my battery went, like literally you can see screen usage 2%, Android usage like 3%. So pretty much nothing. I don't even have a SIM in this device. So again, there is a massive idle drain. Again, the vibrations are a bit longer than you expect. So that might annoy. Also the fingerprint scanner that it simulates everywhere itself. And then pretty much nothing. You have auction OS camera from the 60. So pretty much works everything from the 4K recording and stuff. But you can't actually use the portrait mode or the nightscape. So for that, you have to actually use ANX camera from the MIUI built for auction OS or Gcam, which again, pretty much just works amazing with the slow motion and stuff. So let's just get to the installation. Now, the only prerequisites over here are a bit knowledge in installing the ROMs, unlocked bootloader and the installed to up recovery. If you have actually installed ROMs previously, you can just go ahead and install it. So again, once you're into the recovery, just go to wipe, advanced wipe, dial away, cache system data, swipe to wipe. Now, once you're on your PC, you have to just grab your phone, swipe to unlock, and then go to backup and just backup anything like boot, 64 MB, because we have to actually restore a backup from the developer. So again, just connect the phone to your PC, just like that. Once the phone has been connected, just go to Poco Phone F1, internal storage, just scroll down to twerp, backups, your serial number, date, and then just delete everything inside it, which would be just the boot cause we backed up it. Then just open this OnePlus 7 Pro folder. Now this would be inside a zip, just extract it and just copy everything inside it, just like this. Once everything has been just copied, go to internal storage again. We would just close this folder and copy the ringer modes right over here. Now you have to just grab your phone, swipe to unlock again, go to restore, 
select the backup, make sure system vendor and boot has been ticked and swipe to restore. Once the ROM has been restored, just hit reboot system, do not install and voila you have successfully converted your Pocophone F1 into OnePlus 7 Pro. Now again the first boot won't actually take time, it should be around like 40 to 30 seconds. And the phone is back up in no time, so again unlock it and it would be in some weird language like Russian I guess it is. So just go to the settings and fix that first of all. So go here, the second less option, then the second option, language and input, then the first one, just add English right over here and then switch it to the first preferred language. And there you go, now your ROM is English, finally. So again you have root explorer over here added by the developer, but just if you don't basically want it, go to hidden applications, add it right over here. And that's basically it. Now if you just quickly want to fix the vibration, go to ringer modes and install it as a normal APK. Open it, request the permission, ringer modes, allow. Then just add the toggle right over here into the quick settings panel, which would be somewhere here. Just add it right there. Tap it, there you go, vibrate completely works. Silent, normal, again the vibrate is just, it feels like it would blow up the motor. And yeah guys, that's pretty much it on how you can convert your Pocophone F1 into a complete OnePlus 7 Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want more videos like this for your Pocophone F1, which I would be coming soon, please subscribe down there. Again, if you want to check out the One UI and other stuff, just subscribe to the channel and just go through the playlist. It would be a lot of help and see you guys in the next one. Peace.